press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update from Adda247. Bell icon dabaiye Adda247 ki sari notifications paiye. Adda247, government job in your pocket. Hello students, this is Ratnesh and you are watching the Daily Vocab Show. Once again, I am here with another new 10 words which I am going to discuss with you in a very interesting way. And once again, I should tell you that this is the English version and I have uploaded the Hindi version for the same too. So students, you can check it out. So students, what is going, uh, what we are going to do here today, exactly we are uh, going to learn another new 10 words from the newspaper, uh, exactly what I have done. I have taken uh, around 10 words exactly uh, in the older version that I used to do. So precedent to these shows, uh, you have to understand that exactly we are, uh, we'll be getting around, exactly we are not getting 10 words we, because we are getting more than 10 words. How? We will be uh, using the synonyms and antonyms, obviously the sentences, that is the usage of those sentences. And okay students, let's check it out that which words do we have taken today. So the words that I have taken students are, the first one is Q U, it's Q U I X O T I C, exotic. Second word is M A U D L I N, maudlin. The third word is M A L A P R O P I S M, malaprapism. It's malapropism. Fine, it's propism. So the fourth word is Q U I S L I N G. It's quizzling. It's quizzling. Fine. The fifth word is B Y Z A N T I N E. Byzantine. The sixth word is S U P E R C I L I O. U.S. Supercilious. The seventh word is P-R-O-T-A-N. It's protein. So protein is not that particular protein. Uh, uh, it's not related to protein. It's protein. It's a different word. I'll be letting you know the meaning of this particular word. It's actually, it's very interesting. So the eighth word students which we will discuss is S-A-R-T-O-R-I-A-L. It's sartorial. Fine. And the ninth word that we are going to discuss is S A T U R N I N E. Tenth word is Mercurial. It's Mercurial. I'll spell it out. It's M E R C U R I A L. Fine, students. So finally, we have got 10 words here out. And uh, exactly what we are going to do, we are going to check out every individual word. Uh, one by one and I will be letting you the sentences. After that, the task is yours. What is your task? Your task is to use them in your, like uh, wherever you require, what is the requirement? You have to check it out, you have to analyze, you have to uh, consistently use these words because uh, like if I say that you have got so many videos related to the daily vocab show, I think you must have got a number of like a couple of words in your bucket. So what you're going to do, you have to just take out those words from the bucket so that you can just apply them, you can just throw them out in the world. By the word, I mean to say your word. Fine, soon. So here, uh, the first word is quixotic. Let's check it out. That first word, what does it mean? And what is the sentence that do we have here particularly? So exactly, students, we can use many words in many ways, but exactly what is important? Important it is that when we are able to comprehend it, like it's not like that that you just start using those words wherever you speak like wherever you like do do you require wherever it's not like that you what you have to do is exactly when you are using those words particularly if i say say i use the word exotic i am supposed to use this particular word in the sentence in my question in my in my vocab in my in any any part then i should relate this particular word to me to the person to whom i am speaking this is the kind of uh, variance it, they sh it should be, isn't it true? So it should be like uh, you should uh, relate with that particular word in the sentence. So how uh, you can use this word? I have a sentence for you for every thousand startups, startups, everything which is getting startup with 
to exotic sentences for every thousand startup with exotic plans only a handful only a handful become popular now it's a very simple sentence i think that if uh, uh, any any of the reader uh, out the, the viewer out there is trying to relate with the word it's very simply saying that for every thousand startup it means to say whatever is being started in the form in the form of like business organization or kind of setup that is uh, related to kind of venture or anything if anything uh, is starting out there and with a kind of exotic plan it says exotic plans only a handful become popular a handful become popular you can say successful now the question is what does exotic mean it means simply to relate with anything which has a kind of uh, uh, out of the box idea you can say the uh, that the, that is the UV, when you get the kind of idea which is simply not very normal which is not very on the on the single path you can say but exotic is something which is unrealistic you can say you must have heard the word unrealistic isn't it true so simply when you are uh, relating this to, to this particular word quixotic you must understand that something which is unrealistic something which is not real that can be quixotic so particularly if we uh, talk about these synonyms so i have the kind of parts of speech first of all this is an adjective and the the synonyms that we will be discussing are the first one is visionary i'm writing in the, the capital letters so that you can just connect it with it the second is fanciful fanciful fine the third one is u t o p i a n it's utopian utopian is a different word it's a kind a uh, nice word uh, you can just you add this uh, in your dictionary students as uh, it does mean to say something we kind of different view perspective kind of uh, different dimension completely fine so uh, uh, one more word you can add unrealistic here that i have already told you but still you can just add it here unrealistic and in the case of antonyms you can add a word i have a word for you this says practical i hope it's visible uh, the word you can add another is pragmatic i i think pragmatic word is pretty clear to you students because uh, pragmatic is also something where, where you just are pretty practical we are we are taking the steps like an intellect like uh, you are an intellectual actually but when you are taking steps intellectually you are just pragmatic your approach is pragmatic fine so these are the uh, pre words which i hope are clear now let's proceed to the next word the next word which we are going to discuss is it's in, in it's, it's interesting word students and uh, we are pretty sure that when we are using those words <coughs> we don't go wrong because it it is the more important thing than when we are like answering our question paper or exam that is so where they should be we should be very much clear isn't it the second word is modeling m a u d l i and it's modeling you can use this particular word as an adjective in the sentence so what is the sentence that i have he became modeling after coming out of the theater coming out of the theater watching the opera i hope opera you must have heard students it's a pretty uh, famous term uh, related to the kind of show opera is a kind of song musical form he became modeling what do you think he would have become he became modlin after coming out of the theater watching the opera so modlin is a word when a person becomes a very kind of emotional exactly i don't mean to say he is emotional but he becomes sentimental that's the correct word so modlin is a word where you can say the person has become kind very emotional he has a kind of sentiments he it's it's coming out it's a certain it's a certain kind of age you can say a phase of life when person becomes so emotional so sentiment sentimental when his uh, the emotions are oozing out of his like that memory you can say uh, or, or his like body isn't it so emotional is a nice word so for modeling but still i have some words that i could tell you here soon the word that i have taken are very interesting first of all i'll let you know the first word 
C S H M A L T Z Y. It's Shamalzi. It's Shamalzi. The it's the pronunciation of this word is quite different, and the word is also quite different because uh, I must tell you first of all because I think many of you must have not heard the word Shamalzi. It's a kind of music. Uh, let me explain you. It's a kind of music where people go uh, kind of mad. They become foolish after like uh, having this particular music. This is kind of what what makes people uh, so emotional, so uh, thinkable. They just become uh, they go mad. Exactly. So shmalzi is a kind of nice word which is which can be particularly related to modern. So I I, I want you all students to add this word in your dictionary. The second word you can take is M U S H Y mushy. Isn't it different? M A U M A W K I S H mawkish. And the fourth word is S O P P Y soapy. So these are the four words that you can take here. If you require a simple word, I could say you ask you to add the word sentimental. And I think everyone out there must have heard the word sentimental because it's a pretty simple word and emotional is a kind of uh, help. For you, if you want to connect with the word modeling, and what do we have in the form of antonym? Students, let's check it out. The antonym you can say calm, C A L M, calm. It's simple, isn't it? Someone who is calm, he may not be very emotional, he may not be very uh, mushy. Mushy is something where you are like, thinking a lot, you're not supposed to think that much. But if you're mockish, you're obviously get, getting foolish. Your activities are getting so uh, in a weird way that you are like, it seems that you are half drunk, isn't it? That is the kind of pillar person that becomes soppy and mawkish. So these are the words that you can take. Uh, and if you want, you can take a word simply in the form of antonym numb. The person who is numb, he is not speaking, he is not talking a lot, he is not uh, saying that much. So let's proceed to the third word. The third word that we are going to discuss here, students, is again a very interesting word. In fact, okay, let me write the word first. Okay, the word is M A. L A P R O P I S M. It's malapropism. It's a noun. Malapropism. So malapropism is a noun. First of all, we have to understand that it can be used in many ways. So, for example, example, I have used a word. Uh, it it can be in a simple sense that it says the malapropism. of the Macbeth was doubted after he killed the Duncan, not the Duncan, it should be killed Duncan. I have used a sentence from the Macbeth and actually uh, you must remember that the uh, the Mac Macbeth, that was he was the, uh, you can say general out there and he just killed Duncan obviously to become the, uh, to get the throne. So uh, malapropism of Macbeth was doubted. Malapropism, that is actually uh, how we can relate in this particular sentence. It is, I, I think it is very much possible here that if students uh, don't know the meaning of malapropism or they must have not heard about Macbeth or Duncan, they must not have heard or read the, the, the play. They are going to find difficulty, they are going to find, struggle a lot here because malapropism is some kind of, uh, uh, you can say like uh, also, have you heard a word uh, oxymoron? Have you heard this word students? Oxymoron. Let me tell you. When you start mixing words, when you start mixing words in one word here and from another word from here, and here and then you mix a word and you just make a sentence, that is kind of oxymoron. It's a partial, it's not partial speech, it's indeed figure of speech you must have heard in the uh, literature. So uh, in Macbeth, what happened? Actually, uh, when the, the three witches came and they held the kind of prophecies where he could uh, see some some kind of different things and after that uh, the death of Duncan uh, he had a dream where Lady Macbeth also found something differently in, in the perspective where she uh, 
had to make her husband, that is Macbeth, to go and kill Duncan, isn't it? That was kind of uh, in the act too, I remember. So, uh, the oxymoron is the word how we can use here. So, for the particular word that is malapropism, students, I would suggest you the synonyms that you can take here is the first one is uh, missaying. Missaying. Do you understand what does missaying means? Actually, missaying is when you are not saying correctly, when you are using different words, when you are using uh, something which is making someone blur, something which is making someone uh, very much confused, that is. Uh, obfuscated so the second word we can take here is b a r b a r i s m barbarism third word we can take is uh, i am writing this word already i have told you oxymoron but it still i want you to add this particular word it's misusage so exactly if we talk about the sentence that is malapropism students it uh, the word malapropism is generally or you can say exactly related to something where you are using the condition that is you are getting barbarism you are using the words indifferently which can be distinct obviously but may not be giving or uttering a simple kind of meaning to the uh, to it it can become judgmental fine so misusage you can particularly say here and uh, what we can say as part the of, of antonym, antonym you can say a simple word that is uh, useful, isn't it students? Useful and uh, one more word we can take here, that is kindness. Now I suppose it's pretty clear now, let's proceed to the next word and check it out the fourth word. Okay, so fourth word is quizzling. Now check it out that how can we use this word, you can use this word as a noun in the sentence, it's simple. And the sentence that I have taken here is... Uh, again a very simple word it's it says uh, India never expects or should forgive any more Q I S L I N G it's quizzling now Sentence says, India never expects or should forgive any more quizzling at the border. Now, I think those uh, who are watching this uh, may think that, sir, exactly we are getting the meaning of quizzling as if someone who is making the kind of creating the chaos at the border or some kind of unrest or some kind of uh, uh, misrepresentation, isn't it? People may think, actually, quizzling is a person, it's a noun, actually. So, you can simply say a person who betrays, who is betraying, it may not be the lover, but obviously the betrayer. So, betrayer in the sense of betrayer, what we can say is the synonyms that I have taken are, the first one is traitor, the second one uh, here we can take is collaborator. Have you heard the word collaborator? It's, it's simple, pretty simple, collaborator. What can we take the third, uh, again a nice word, renegade, I should suggest you in fact you should use this word as well. So fifth word, not exactly fourth word, turn coat, it's uh, something like turning the coat but exactly the person who's the turn coat is a betrayer, isn't it? a nice word. And uh, Judas are also uh, like taken as this in the particular condition so I, I must say that Judas are also the part of the traitor and betrayer. So, turn quote, I, I think it's pretty clear now in the case of antonym, simply we can say that uh, patriot, person who is patriot or you can say loyalist. Have you heard the word jingoist? We can add that particular word here if you have heard it, students, because I have many times used that jingoist word in my shows. So, let's proceed to the fifth word. Okay, after the fourth, the fifth word that do we have here is Fifth word is B Y Z A N T I N E. It's Byzantine. How can we use it? We can use it as an adjective. What is the sentence? The sentence that we have here is uh, the Byzantine. authority of misleading 
comments over the happening should not should not be forgiven now let's take it out sentence is pretty simple it says the byzantine authority first of all you have to understand that authority is a noun authority word is a noun and if something is describing the noun it's adjective of misleading comments the misleading comments may be in the sense of like uh, the comments which are making you uh, dismay you can say dismal or, or the kind of making you not understand or not making you the uh, getting the your they are making you getting the varied form of instances isn't it so you can say happening should not be forgiven okay now if we say if we talk about this particular word what is the byzantine me here the sentence in the synonyms if we i'll tell you you can easily connect with that because uh, the first word that i have taken is intricate intricate what is intricate i'll let you know intricate second word is involved third word we can take here is k n o t t y fourth word we can take is complex and the fifth more word we can take is d a e d a l have you heard this word i think it's pretty new word for you to intricate involved naughty complex and it's complex complex and daedal it's daedal d a e d a l so what does it mean intricate is like when you are getting involved or you are getting making it fussy making your things are making fussy so much that you are involved in a particular thing that is not pretty sure which is not pretty uh, clear and uh, obviously you are making it so much uh, uh, you can say difficult that you are the person who is got involved in that particular thing so uh, involved or naughty can be the synonym particular uh, synonym and what can be the antonym students for this word i think you can say you can take the word simple why simple it's because not complex not uh, very much varied non complex isn't it so the simple words we can take here as antonym are simple non complex intricate involved naughty complex and daedal are the synonyms of byzantine byzantine is a word which says something which a person it shows the quality of a person who is getting involved and making things complex that's that's it it's simple let's proceed to the sixth word sixth word is okay now let's check out, check out the sixth word first of all as students actually the sixth word is pretty nice it says s u p e r c i l i o u s supercilious it's supercilious and it's an adjective okay for sure it's an adjective so what uh, do we do we have as an example here the example that i have taken here students is the king ravana uh, this is the english word Ra in hindi ravan you say in english you say ravana the king ravana <coughs> indeed supercilious indeed supercilious eventually realized nothing has left with him i think if uh, the term ravana has come in the sentence and something has uh, been used for that particular man that is the king i think everyone would have got the exact meaning of the word supercilious actually supercilious is a word which is showing you the proud sense the sense of proud the essence of making yourself your esteem so much super esteem that it becomes a kind of proud because the esteem becomes when when it does become the proud you don't understand there is a thin line between the proud and self esteem your self esteem is very much important but when you start uh, you can say demolishing others self esteem that is the self pride it becomes the proud isn't it it's a very simple so proud can be termed as super serious so what do we have as the synonyms students synonyms that i have taken here is haughty h a u g h t 
why haughty it's not haughty that you are thinking this is the different one that haughty in the hollywood and bollywood there are different and now arrogant third word is contemptuous contemptuous it's it's a simple word contemptuous and uh, one more word you can take is students is disdainful yes disdainful and more when you if you want one more where you can say lofty lofty one who praises himself and he is very much proud about about his work isn't it and also the person who is conceited have a uh, kind of thing that he has a very uh, high opinion about himself isn't it the person who is conceited so the antonym you can take is meek meek is quite like pretty obviously antonym of this word that is humble it's, it's exactly not humble but obviously the haughty one the arrogant one because meek is the person who becomes too obedient that is the exact word i should use here indeed so supercilious is the word which means someone who is very arrogant who is very uh, opposite of humble that is these words contemptuous disdainful lofty and all let's proceed to the seventh word seventh word that we have here is now very nice one p r o t e a n it's protein you can use this word as an adjective the sentence that we have here is students it says uh as we know he is he is is you can say as an adjective a uh, protean leader so very few trust him this is the sentence it says as we know he is a protean leader if you think someone who is a protean leader or protean person and very few trust him what do you think exactly uh, can be the meaning of protean it must be something in a negative sense but actually it always is not in the negative sense i would say students protean is a word which you can say a person who is is keep on who keeps on changing who keeps on changing changing what like like chameleon isn't it yes so keeps on changing a person can be a protean so exactly the synonyms that we should take here are uh well first one is variable okay second one is mutable third one is uh, changeable oh fine changeable and after that we can take versatile even versatile can be the synonym students yes you won't think like uh, protein is always the negative one we should not say if someone says to us it can be the kind of abuse no not that so in constant you can take actually sometimes it becomes when person is using a particular adjective for you to describe in kind of nature it can be in the sense of negative conditions but at times is also it also becomes positive isn't it when a person is trying to commend you when he's trying to compliment your abilities obviously he he may say that person is versatile he may change himself in every every phase of life so that particular means may become the positive sense so it it is important that how you are using those words isn't it so what is the antonym antonym you can say immutable yeah endless endless so uh, what are these synonyms uh, variable mutable changeable versatile and constant i hope it's pretty clear now i'll let you know variable is something which is not fixed mutable changeable uh, not uh, disagreeing conformity there is a disagreement kind of changeable versatile and inconstant simple immutable endless immutable is someone who's not changing himself who's not like uh, debating or not kind of disagreeing to the po points and unless who can go on a long and long so let's proceed to the eighth word the eighth word that we are going to discuss here students is okay the eighth word is sartorial s a r t o r i a l fine the word is sartorial it can be used as an adjective 
uh, what can be this example example that I have taken here students is his sartorial ability to stitch so varied and indifferent clothes has made him versatile. It's a pretty lengthy sentence, don't worry students, I'll let's make you understand. His territorial ability to stretch so varied and indifferent clothes has made him Versatile. Versatile, I have just told you just now before in the word. Actually, sartorial ability is something which is related to, you can say, simp it's a very simple word actually used for the uh, exact phases. That, uh, there is no kind of dimensions and a lot more here involved uh, because it is related to kind of clothings. You can say the ready made things. You may have uh, heard a word that person who makes uh, clothes, uh, the tailor. So, the, after the getting the synonyms, I hope you can just connect with the word sartorial because it's a different word and it's a kind of perspective where it has been already been circumscribed so we cannot go beyond that because the clothing is also the synonym are you getting students clothing is also the synonym of sartorial so i think you can understand what does it mean it, it there is also a word t-a-i-l-o-r-i-n-g tailoring tailoring is also the example uh third word we can take garment making yes in fact garment as well People may think, sir, how, what kind of word is this when synonyms are garment making and tailoring? Yes, exactly. Clothing, tailoring, garment making. And the fourth word that we can take here is, uh, you can say, uh, uh, ready-made clothes. These kind of words are also the synonyms. Yes, students, indeed. Sartorial is related to these words. And uh, if we talk about the but antonym, even I have taken the antonym, you must go and check it out that dumpy and unstylish, something like, uh, which is not clothing, which is not very neat and tidy, something which is dumpy and stylish is the antonym of the word sartorial. I hope pretty clear that, I hope it's pretty clear to you students that sartorial is related to clothing and tailoring, garment making and that, that kind of word. Let's proceed to the uh, ninth word here. Ninth word that we are going to discuss here students is Saturnine, S A T U R N I N E. Saturnine, it's an adjective. The sentence that I have taken here is after the loss in the quiz competition, these Saturnine. Faces of the team members, team members was about to see. So, what does it mean? After the loss in the uh, quiz competition, obviously, someone who has lost the game or lost the quiz, if he has the kind of Saturn 9 phase, I think you have got the meaning, isn't it? If you lost something, if you just failed in your like steps, whatever the hurdles have come in your way, if you have lost them, obviously, if you are getting Saturn 9, your face is getting Saturn 9. What kind of meaning are getting is there? So you can say simply, sir, uh, we are getting in sense of something one who is gloomy. Yeah, that's exactly. So the word that I have taken is glum, morose, not happy, obviously not happy. Uh, dark fourth word you can take is sullen fine dismal yeah yes yeah, students uh, dismal is particular word where we get the sense of uh, where, where you are going get you are uh, what do you say you have got so much bad luck you, you it was your bad day that is your you are dismal you are dissatisfied you are not happy you are so much uh, in a gloomy kind of state, you are so much sad, 
obviously sullen because sullen is a word which shows your sadness so the sorrow okay and now after getting the antonym i think everyone will get the exact meaning jovial buoyant boy is a kind of force but also there is an energy energy involves something is very true so blitzum yeah so these are the antonym these are the synonyms finally saturnine is related to kind of glum sadness sorrows morose dark sullen and dismal and this is the pretty simple sentence so i think you just take it down just take the screenshots don't forget to uh, if i'm not repeating if i'm getting a thing out of mind that i have to say students you have to take the screenshot or you have to take them down in your notebooks so let's proceed to the last word of the show last word is m e r c u r i a l mercurial this is the 10th word fine and uh, sentence is many people think are politicians have quite mercurial mercurial approach in their steps mercurial approach now it's very difficult to understand or difficult to say because about politicians because we don't know even the politicians watching out there must may not know exactly what we are isn't it so many people think our politicians have quite mercurial approach in their uh, steps if i talk about the mercurial steps so that is the kind of approach i should say indeed that uh, the synonyms exactly after getting the synonym you will get the meaning first is fickle yes one who is fickling fickling one who has the flickering mind or fickle fickles a lot he is not fixed second is erratic i think now it's pretty clear now erratic i have used so many times students in fact uh, basically this is a very simple word which says you which tells you something which is not fixed or very getting very changed in a varied form so capricious also doubtful capricious is not good it can harm you unsteady okay so fickle it's not pickle it's fickle pickle can harm you either pickle and fickle both both can harm you do, do just be aware erratic capricious and unsteady so these are the four uh, synonyms in fact and the antonym students which you can take here is certain second consistent what do you think it's pretty clear now mercurial certain and consistent are uh, consistent c is the noun consistent is an adjective can be worked uh, as uh, antonyms and these words can work as like what obviously synonym so i think now it's pretty clear the p many people think our politicians have quite mercurial obviously we we should say indeed when they promise us when they come before us like joining hands and saying that we are the one we are going to helpers we are just your saviors we are the not lord exactly after becoming the the chairperson of that uh when we, when the incumbency comes and they start giving our promises they say yes we are your lords after they become exactly lords isn't it they are not supposed to work like that but exactly students here you have got 10 words uh, i think you have enjoyed and you have learned a lot you should use them in your daily uh, conversation or wherever you find it important or uh, like uh, useful so students don't forget to watch the hindi version of the same content thank you for watching the show press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss another update from adda 247 bell icon dabaiye adda 247 ki sari notifications paiye adda 247 government job in your pocket